Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet the church with the peace of the Lord. We're going to open our Bibles. The book of Rom Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, we're going to read verse 1 together. Romans 8, verse 1. Verse 1. Amen. Let's read together. Let us read. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Amen. The church may be seated.
Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. My brethren, the word of God that was left to man, it is the only way for man to understand what is in God's mind. There is no other means. There is no other path for man to be able to reach God's eternity other than if man leaves his, his own human time, his own physical time and enters into the time of the eternal which is God's time. And if we begin now to seek in the Bible uh, in a human reason trying to understand the Bible if you try to read the Bible like if it was just a, a common book like if you're reading any other book inspired by man you will not be able to understand you will not be able to comprehend God's mysteries and you end up going crazy you will do foolish things because what happens a lot is what we see people that do not understand the revelation of the Word of God and what is behind the letter and now they begin from in name, the name of God they begin to do f absurd things a man has the courage to enter into a plane and take this plane towards a building and kill thousands of people for love of a God when man loses you, the reason when man loses the understanding of what is prophetic the reason why man was made by God created by God man enters through a path that has no way back when Paul writes to the Hebrews Paul speaks of the importance of man to seek the Lord Paul in his letters written and revealed and inspired by the Holy Spirit Paul lives for us lives for the church he lives for the people of God all the teachings so that we may come closer to God and in one of these letters there in Hebrew Paul says the following terrible thing is to fall on the hands of the living God imagine what message is, is a terrible thing it's terrible for you to fall on the hands of the living God well now wait a minute isn't this what everyone wants? Isn't it what man wants? To be closer to God? So now, how come it is terrible for you to fall on God's hands? On the living God. So, King David, in a moment in which he was going through of, of anguish, a difficult moment in his life, David, he had to impose his rule over his kingdom. David had to show strength in order to be respected by the neighboring nations. The nations there were neighbors of Israel. David was a warrior. David was the only king that never lost a single battle on a battlefield but he had many internal trials he was he had trials with his family and with his friends and in one of those difficult moments of his life David says something that was interesting may I fall on the hands of God 
but may I not fall on the hands of man. Now imagine, isn't, doesn't it sound like he's coherent, the Bible? Paul says, it is terrible to fall on God's hands. Now David, he says the following, I'd rather fall on God's hands. But now he explains why. Because God's mercy will last forever. If you read those two texts inside of uh, human reason, then you say, somebody made a mistake here. But the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit reveals to man, when the Holy Spirit begins to work on man's heart, he, he removes what is human and begins to operate God's mystery, what nobody else understands, but only the faithful servant, the one who is living moment of sanctification, living moment in which the Holy Spirit is revealing himself to, to them. So the text here, the, these two texts, they speak of the two situations. One is God's hand. That is, truly, it is uh, frightful, terrible for whoever falls on God's hands. In the other hand, it speaks of God's mercy. Less is forever. So those are two hands. One is speaking of God's mercy, one speaking of God's grace, and the other speaking of God's judgment. And the text in Romans says that no condemnation are to the ones who are in Christ Jesus, that do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Holy Spirit. So now the text begins to make sense, because we live in a world we live in a world in which God's time, in God's clock, we live in the time called soon, the time in which Jesus is coming. In Revelation, it, it speaks clearly about this moment in which the Holy Spirit will be working in the faithful church, the Holy Spirit will be bringing people from every part of the world to assemble a faithful church, a church that has no name, and that the Holy Spirit will be adorning those people, preparing these people to meet with Jesus. David says that God's mercy will last forever. And our desire as a church is to always be on the God, hands of mercy of God. We never want to fall on the hands of judgment. And the only way for man to be in the hand of mercy of God is when man hears the voice of the Holy Spirit and man pays attention, goes beyond this life and now begins to hear and accept and apply the signs of God, the advices of God, of everything that is happening in the world around us. The Word says that in the last days, the signs of the end will be fulfilled. And that's where we are seeing today. The, so, the solemn signs of God, the solemn warnings of God are being sounded of the world. The churches are proclaiming this, that Jesus is returning, and man needs to get ready. Man needs to repent of his sin. Man needs to run to God's arms. And those signs are coming with God's judgments. And God's judgments are being poured out over the world. And we see this as well. We are seeing what is happening in our planet, in nature, in the climate. We are seeing everything. The judgment of God is being placed upon the world. The prophecies are being fulfilled independent of man's will. So now the word says that no condemnation are for the ones who are in Christ Jesus. And you know why? Because the ones who are under the hands of mercy from God, they are 
hearing the signs, they are hearing the warnings from God, and every day more and more they are getting ready, running away from the hand of judgment. That's why there is no condemnation for us. You know why? Because before the end, the church will be raptured. The church will be taken away. But it is not the end of the planet Earth. No. It is before the end of what is called before when it will begin of a man the three woe 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 on, on revelations man can do can see all the signs see the hear the warnings and ignore them and it happens very often man hears about Jesus returning he, man hears the church testifying he hears the preaching and he hears everything uh, spiritual meaning and over everything that is happening in the world and, but man sometimes ignores becomes unaware doesn't give heed to the word of prophecy But the church that is paying attention to this is, is protected because God's mercy will last forever. The mercy of man has an end. Man might forget. Man many times does not forget. May forget today and may not forgive tomorrow. May I never fall on man's hand because man is unjust man's mercy has an end but God's mercy they are infinite they never extinguish much on the contrary they, re they are renewed every day they are renewed every morning before you wake up God's mercy is now is a, has already been renewed and now you are a target of God's mercy you may be a target of God's love you may be a target of, of God's grace, independent of your situation, human as a human. If you are in Jesus, you are the target of God's mercy because it is renewed and it is multiplied. What God has promised to you will be fulfilled. But you might say, "Oh, I'm tired today. Today I'm I'm discouraged." I'm in a trial, I'm not well spiritually, but it doesn't matter. Never leave the hand, the hand of mercy. Stay on the hand of mercy. Don't go to the other hand. Because the position here is not that God will castigate man, he's going to punish man. No, it's man that choose in which hand he will stay. Either man will be under God's mercy or will be under God's judgment. And our word as a church is come and stay on the hands of mercy from God. That's what we are struggling to do. We as a church every day, we fight every day to remain remain under the hand of mercy, God's hand of mercy. We are flawed. We have trials and tribulations. Yes, the signs are out there. Yes, but every day we run to God's hands. Every day, receive an embrace from the Lord. Every day, we receive a comfort from the Lord, a direction from the Lord, and that's what causes us to remain under God's hands of mercy. Man might ignore the warnings and the signs, but the judgment, he will not be. He's not going to be able to ignore. There's no way to ignore God's judgment. There's no way to ignore what. It, what has already been determined. There's no way for you to prevent what has already been determined by God. And the judgments of God are upon the earth. It doesn't matter if men just make a feat and run away. It doesn't matter. The only way for you, for men to run away from this judgment is to run to God's mercy's hand. And the only way for men to do this is in Christ Jesus, because in Christ Jesus there is no condemnation for the ones who are in Him. 
Paul said, terrible thing is to fall on the hands of the living God. You know why the living God? Because when men understand that God's judgment is for the ones who are away from God, then they will be able to see truly that God is alive because His promise, His prophecy has been fulfilled. In the same way that it, the Israelites abandoned the voice of prophecy and stopped listening to the prophets, for 400 years they didn't hear the voice of the prophet. Then Jesus uh, appears to Israel and they denied and rejected Jesus. But on the third day, Jesus resurrects as a living God, the only Son of God that now is alive amongst us. And that's why for the ones who are rejecting the Word of God, to the ones who are rejecting the promise of God, they will meet with Jesus, but during the judgment. But there and there, they will see that everything that they had rejected and abandoned and that they didn't want, they will see that Jesus is truly alive. But then there will be no solution for them. That's why that word says that terrible it is to be to fall on the hands of the living God. That's why, brethren, the message that our message today is this: Do not wait until the, the after the the rapture of the church. Don't wait. Make this change today. Change today. Leave the place where you are. Leave the condition in which you are as a sinner. Leave the condition as you are receiving their eternal judgment of, of God, away from God, and now come to be on the God's hand of mercy, where we will be eternally in God's presence. This is our message, a simple message, but you need now to make a decision. The warnings, the signs of the Lord are out there. Like today, you are hearing a message from the part of the Lord so that you may change your life. It doesn't matter the past. Forget about the past. What is important is the present. And what is important is the future. Because the future, you can do lots with the future. And today, the Lord is inviting you to be under His powerful hands. Because it is with strong hands that the Lord fights for men. It is with strong hand that God took the people from away from Egypt, from slavery, and placed them on the promised land. And it is also with the same powerful hand that He is guiding us to a promised land, to a new heaven, to a new home where everything will pass, where we will be transformed, where there will only be joy, where there will only be rejoicement, joy, and happiness. Because our uh, God will be eternally with us and we will be in the presence of our God. May God bless us. We're going to hear a song.
Louvado seja o nome do Senhor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The same judgment that brings condemnation to the ones who are away from Christ, this judgment also does not bring any condemnation to the ones who are in Christ. It's a hand of mercy from God. Because Jesus is alive and we already have, we're already living this. We have already accepted this. We believe that Jesus died on the cross but resurrected and now He is alive in our midst. Today He is alive in our hearts. We believe. We live this. The Red Sea opened up for Israel to go through. The same Red Sea that opened up for Israel to go through and the people passed through with dry feet also closed over Pharaoh and his soldiers. The same judgment. What is a blessing for the people of God? What is condemnation for the ones who are away from Christ? is a blessing to the ones who are in Jesus. Now you need tonight or as soon as possible you need to choose the condemnation of God or God's mercy. It is you and God, we as a church, we have already made our choice and we chose the better portion, which is to be under the powerful hands, mer merciful gods of a living God. And our invitation is come as well to be under the hands of God. We're going to stand up. <laughs>
Senhor enviou o Seu único Filho, Senhor, para morrer por nós, para nos dar direito, Senhor, à salvação, para um dia morarmos com o Senhor na eternidade, Senhor. That's why, Lord, our greatest joy is to be in your house, praising your holy name, praising you, Lord, for all your deeds in our midst. Because, Lord, only you are worthy of our adoration, Lord, of our praise, Lord. Because, Lord, the greatest joy from us is to be a part of this body, to be in your house, Lord. To be a part of this redemptive work, Lord. This wonderful work that one day you introduced to us. How good it is, Lord, that one day we had a good meeting with you, Lord, in order to enjoy of the wonders of the Lord and the blessings that you have poured out upon your people that are without measure, Lord, because you have not looked to the imperfection of your people. But you are the one who are always with open arms to embrace the ones to, who come to you, Lord. That's where we surrender our gratitude to you, Lord, for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. And for the angels of the Lord that are, are walking amongst the church. And for every heart that you have moved today to be in your house hearing this word of awakening, Lord. Because the time of the Lord is near. It is close, Lord. We praise the Lord for everything in the name of Jesus. Lord, we got. My brother, the Lord has given a couple of gifts as we pray for the service. The Lord manifested himself, in spiritually speaking, giving to us a direction regarding what the people that the Lord wants to reach tonight. The Lord is speaking to a man who is here. He had on his youth a bad experience. And until that point, during his youth, he was a servant of God. Truly was raised in a, a Christian family, hearing the voice of the Lord. But when he was a youth, he had a bad experience, and he went astray from the Lord. And from that point forward, he is no longer seeking the Lord, is not speaking with the Lord. He has no joy in testifying of God's power in his life because he's no longer leaving God's mercy. But tonight, the Lord gave him a deliverance. Tonight, God gave him a, a deliverance. And tonight, for sure, his desire is to change his life so that he will be under God's mercy, merciful hands. So here's this man. Also, the, the Lord is, is speaking with a couple. This couple knows the Lord, but they are living a life, spiritually speaking, a, a dangerous life, a risky life. Truly, they are living in disobedience, not doing what the Lord has required of their lives, spiritually speaking. That's what I mean. Let me give you an example. Like if a person was riding on a motorcycle in a very high speed. And there they ignore the signs, the warnings, they ignore everything. They are riding their motorcycle. Little do they know the risk they are running. And here the Lord is showing a couple that is living like that, living a dangerous life. They are ignoring God's warnings ignoring God's advices but look tonight the Lord is inviting you for you to be living in the presence of the Lord Jesus amen and uh, they also are losing little by little they are losing what was the fellowship and they are losing all the contact they that they had with God this is an action of the enemy of our souls. It begins like this, but the intention of the enemy is to steal completely their salvation. So fight for your marriage, fight for your family, and most importantly, for the salvation of the couple and of the home. Amen. The Lord also has shown another woman that needs 
to live in God's revelation. And in order for her to do this, she needs to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, hearing and answering God's advices. Amen. Now we're going to pray, bring the service to a close, and if you want a prayer, a, a private prayer, we are here at your disposal. The church will remain in prayer. And our intention is that you leave this place closer to God, away from the world, farther away from sin and farther away from the judgment of death, but closer to the blessing that we all desire, which is to be in the presence of the living God. Lord, I want to praise your name for the songs that we sang for yet another night in which we were in your house and because we are able to hear your voice because we are able to express what we feel when we are in your presence which is our gratitude which is our praise our adoration to you Lord Lord now we ask that you may give a blessing to all of those who entered here in your house and that your spirit may have freedom Lord to operate in the hearts and the minds removing any uncertainty, any incredulity, every fear. And Lord, placing salvation in Jesus and calling them, Lord, to live in your presence. Operate on behalf of our lives, Lord. Give us a week of victories, a week in which we might, with the eyes of faith, once again, may be a target of your mercy. Stay with us, Lord. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. And your name we say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. Uh, just a few uh, messages. I'd uh, like to ask the brethren to pray for the seminar that we're going to have next week in, in the region of Boston. Many are traveling, many are going to go there, a few with car and other by plane. And uh, ask the brethren to pray for the event so that the Lord may also operate in a mighty way. And we're going to have many guests that will be coming for the first time people that want to know the church they want to know what we have been living and that's our testimony is to relay what we have received from the Lord yesterday and today we had a meeting there in the city of Bravo in Utah it was very cold they wanted to do the baptism outside two people were baptized the water was freezing Lord of mercy but the brethren, they got baptized. It was a great feast. It was gathered there a couple of brethren from the Church of Las Vegas and from California. There were about 80 people in the seminar. But it was a great blessing. Two more lives uh, were baptized on the waters. And for us, this is very gratifying. And in city Provo is a city where it was predominantly uh, the Mormon church they had already kicked out our uh, sign there and then we have in the morning we see a broken sign we had to make another one but they are very strong there, the Mormons they do not accept other religions there this denomination there is very strong and to all the peace of the Lord